y'all, it's Kelly from Lockbriar Knits coming to you from a somewhat sunny, somewhat cloudy Nova Scotia, Canada. It is August. No, no, it's September. It is September 2nd. Woo! Autumn. Yes. Yes. Welcome to back to all of the returning subscribers and uh, hello to all the new subscribers, all the new viewers out there and returning viewers. Um, that was a bit of a jumble, but guess what? We have surpassed the 100 subscribers, so that means giveaway, people. Giveaway! So I figured since I'm from uh, Nova Scotia that I would give away a skein of fleece artists who are local to Halifax, um, and they have they do beautiful yarns. But this is, let me see if I can get this to focus. Oop. This is their Cottage Sock 8020 mix. And the colorway is Nova Scotia. Dun, dun, dun. So this is their Nova Scotia colorway in their Cottage Sock. It feels like there's a lot here. Let me look at the yardage. 382 yards, it might just be kind of loosely skeined, but um, beautiful colors, really had a hard time not keeping this for myself, but also uh, because Christmas is coming, I also thought I would throw in a skein of one of my Christmas colorways that I've just done up, which is this here. And this is on my Exotica base, which is my Superwash, um, the Yak Yarn Superwash. It's gorgeous, incredible soft, incredibly soft. Um, the colors are actually more vibrant than what it's showing on my camera, as per usual. But uh, this is my Old Timey Christmas colorway, which is going to be uh, in the shop coming up, shop update. We'll talk about that later for those of you who don't want to hear about the shop update. I'll leave it till the end and I'm going to try to remember to timestamp things down below. So if you want to skip it, you can skip it and just go to the total randomness at the end. So this is going to be the giveaway. Do, do, do. And I think what I'll do, I'll put a question down below. I don't know what the question is going to be yet, um, but I'll do it down in the comment section giveaway ask a question if you want to be entered in the giveaway uh, then just uh, answer the question and I will do the draw on the next podcast which will be I think the 16th two weeks from now uh, so that's for the giveaway I had to die up more of this yarn because I knew I was going to give this one for the giveaway and I wanted to put some in the shop. <laughs> I really wanted one for myself. So, da, 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 giveaway. So, thanks. Big thanks. Huge thanks. Because when I started this, like, what are we? After, this is episode 13. When I started this back, I don't know, five months ago maybe? I really didn't think anybody would watch because there's a lot of knitting podcasts to choose from out there and and um, half the time I don't know what I'm talking about. So thank you so much for coming along for the crazy ride. And I hope you stick around. Uh, so today is, again, no big surprise here, my Lemon Thriller tea and my Shop on the Corner mug from Lunenburg. I love this mug. I have the kind of a matching one too, which I usually alternate between the two of them. And I just like it because look, you know what? A good tea mug requires rippage and this is just perfect. I like to not use a handle when I drink my tea. I, it's like I'm drinking out of a bowl. So I'm going to put this somewhere so I don't spill it on myself. It's still pretty hot. So anyway, let's see. Administration, where can you find me? Here. <laughs> well done. 
Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Kelly L. Boyce. Um, it's not Lockbriar Knits. When I started my Instagram, I'm, I'm an author. I had started it kind of more for my writing. Um, but I didn't really use it a lot for my writing. I just kind of used it more for Slice of Life. And then when the knitting and stuff, I got back into my knitting and, and all of that. Um, I just found it more useful for that. And that seemed to be what I mostly showed it on. But I still use it for my writing a little bit. So I kept the Kelly L. voice. So that was a long-winded explanation as to why it's not Lockbriar Knits and why it's Kelly L. voice. Which, my Lockbriar Knits is LBK and my initials are KLB and that's just a total fluke which I noticed a little while ago. <laughs> Randomness. Okay so um did the giveaway where you oh yeah where you can find me. Uh, I have an Etsy shop Lockbriar Knits and a Facebook page Lockbriar Knits and it's Lockbriar Knits on on the Ravelry group, which is where I do the show notes. And uh, I think that's it. Etsy, Ravelry. I do this every time. You would think I would have it memorized by now. I don't. I probably never will. I feel like I stumble through it every single time we do this. So if you watched episode 12, I kind of did that on the road. <laughs> so it wasn't on the road. I was in the cottage. But uh, I was in PEI the week that I normally film, so I just did a little bit of slice of life. Um, I did a little podcasting every day, and then I kind of cobbled it together. So today we're all in one spot, all in one shot, and we got to get going because I got to meet my sister for coffee, and the boys are only out of the house for a short amount of time. <laughs> so I hate podcasting when there's somebody here. I feel really awkward and I don't know it's just it's weird uh so you know what we're gonna do we're gonna jump into whips if you watched the last episode you'll know that while I was on vacation I made a huge amount of progress on my girl from the grocery store shawl and I promised that when I podcast next I would have it completely done the ends woven in and blocked so I have it completed I don't have the ends woven in I literally finished it last night but here's partly why I spent so much time knitting when I was on vacation I actually injured my thumb <laughs> It was really, really sore, and it took about a week for it not to be sore, so I didn't get a whole lot of knitting done between when I got home and I started knitting again kind of later this week. And then I couldn't block it because my father-in-law came for another visit, and he was here for like three or four days. And I need the spare, the spare room is about the only place large enough that I can kind of lay it out on the um, blocking pads and close the door so the dog doesn't get to it and decide he wants to, I don't know, roll around on it or lay on it. So needless to say, it's finished. The ends aren't woven in and it's not blocked. So next time I podcast, it will be the ends will be woven in and it will be blocked. So for now, here we have it. <laughs> it's actually, <laughs> wait now, I'll try to hold it up. Uh, I did kind of, wrong side, right side, right side. Um, I did make a few little kind of goofs and I don't think I can stand back far enough. We're gonna give it a shot to really get the full when it's blocked, I can imagine it's just going to be like. So here we go. Ba, da, 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 da. <laughs> we'll do it this way. Whoa. So I used, look at all those ends. Oh, that's just going to be painful. <laughs> so let me expand. I actually, I really like how this turned out. And I, I really enjoyed the knit. 
so I'm going to uh, sit back down. <laughs> um, the yarns that I used, <laughs> it is a little chilly too. I can't wait until it's cool enough that I can wear these all the time. Um, so this is the purple. It's um, alpaca drops. I have to say this is super soft and I love the feel of the yarn. I didn't love working with it, which when I was just doing the little kind of mini stripes here was not a big deal. Um, but when I was doing the larger sections, I just found it really splitty. So when I'm going to take this off because <laughs> it's not that cold today. Um, but when I was knitting with, with it on the larger sections, I just found it really splitty, which got kind of annoying. Uh, and then when I switched over to the colored sections, because you can kind of see at the end part you only do like oops two lines of them I think it is right yeah um kind of two thin lines and when I switched over to my main color which was lichen and lace and this was their pressed flower I think that's either their pressed flower or their wild flower I think I think it's the pressed flower. Anyway, I think I've mentioned it before. Uh, but that's Lichen and Lace. She's out of uh, Sackville, New Brunswick. And when I switched over to this one, which the yarn is also just a little thicker, so I don't know if that made the difference, but it was so much easier to knit. Um, so but at the same time, the color matched, like the purple from the alpaca matched the purple in the lichen and lace perfectly. And I really do love, I was a little iffy. I didn't know if the kind of purple stripes in the end were going to sort of just blend too much. But now that I see them and you've got the big chunk of the purple at the end, I think it really draws it out more. So anyway, this is actually my first completed shawl. I just realized that. This is my first completed shawl. I have, uh, and this was uh, The Girl from the Grocery Store by Ohi Locatelli. Um, so I have her uh, starting point cow, which I started when she was doing the starting point mystery cow. And that's still languishing. And I keep going back and forth on what I'm going to do with it. Um, but I think I will finish it. I'm just not right now. Not right now. So that I will weave in the ends and block for the next time. And um, show you what it looks like. So that is my finished object. And then, and then, what else? Oh, I do have a hoe. The hoe was my car knitting from um, PEI. So that's where we spent our vacay. We had a good vacation too. Usually when we go there, um, we go there because my stepson has always gone there in the summertime. Um, my husband and I got together. Um, he didn't want to change my stepson's routine too much. So his mother took him for one week because that's where she's from and she has a cottage there. And then we rented a cottage in the same area. Um, so we spent a week, the following week or the previous week, so that he had two weeks in a row, which he's turning 14 at this month. I don't know how much longer we'll be doing that because he's probably going to start getting to the age where 
he wants to stay back and hang out with his friends. So anyway, I forget where I was going with that. Anyway, so this was my car knitting and I'm doing another sock head hat because I'm totally addicted to these things. These are like the best on the go things to knit. I don't have to think. So I'm going to see if I can. This is the, like this yarn. This yarn is gorgeous. It is so soft. I love the colors. It's like this beautiful red. It's got a little bit of like kind of a rosy and then a gold. It's stunning. And this is, of course, so this is um, one of my favorite yarns. It's Handmaiden. Um, their Casbah line, which is 81% Superwash Merino, or actually 81% Merino, maybe it's not Superwash, 9% Cashmere and 10% Nylon. So it is just incredibly soft. I love their yarn. I have, I probably have about four or five skeins of it in different colors and uh, I love it. So I'm probably, I'll probably get, I'll go about maybe this much further because it's a slow sh sl slouch hat. I'll go with this much further and then I'll start shaping for the head I think. So this one's going to be for me because I love it and I'm just selfish that way. <laughs> so that's my hoe. So the other issue I was having, I think it was two episodes ago, was shaping the heel flap and gusset for my socks. I somehow managed to screw myself up because I was following one pattern and then I somehow accidentally <laughs> switched to another pattern and I ended up getting completely backwards. So I did figure out, well I didn't actually figure out my problem but I did figure out how to fix it. Um, but then I couldn't actually do any knitting. I did finish the my Canadian socks, my Canada Day socks, these ones. So I finished those while I was on vacation and that's kind of where I figured out what my problem was or figured out how to fix it. I, don't, I still don't know exactly what the problem was, but I think I just maybe put, started going in the wrong direction. I don't know. I don't know. But today, yesterday, yesterday, um, I started back on, oops, the three, three pairs that I have left because I got to get cracking because I've got sock knitting to do for Christmas. So uh, this is the seconder lavender sock. So last night I got the, um, heel flap and turning of the heel done and um, now I'm just ready to and I picked up the stitches so I'm just ready to start doing like kind of the gusset shaping part and then I'm into the instep so once I get to here I know I'm okay because it was when I got to here on the other sock originally where I was like I did something wrong so if I can get to here I know I'm good to go so I got to there. So I thought, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take the other three pairs, the other two pairs of socks left and do the exact, get to the exact same spot. Because I figure if I do it enough times, it'll get embedded in my brain and I won't make that mistake again. I don't know if that's uh, crazy or or genius. <laughs> so anyway, I did this morning, I just kind of did the, I already had the heel done, or the, this part done. So I just did the heel shaping and I'm hoping to get the, uh, picking up the stitches for this one done later today, maybe. And then I have one other pair of socks. So both of those, um, this one here is on my Forest and Sky colorway. I think there's still one, one of those left. Let me 
the shop. Yes. There's one of those left in the shop. One in sock weight, the 7525, and I think. I was going to say one in the lace weight, but you know what? I don't think there is. I need to make up that one. Yeah. Um, so there's just one skein left in the 7520 sock. I can tell you, it's going to sound like bragging. I'm sorry, but I love how this looks. I love how this is knitting up. I am just so crazy thrilled about it. So that, and then the lavender sock was a kind of a one of colorway that I did that I'm pretty sure I can recreate. <laughs> I said that about the spring explosion. I was never able to recreate it quite the way I originally had it, but uh, I like what I ended up with in the end. <laughs> the, the new recreated spring explosion part two. Uh, so that, and then I have my paper color shirt, which is from uh, Taylor at Will Needles Hands, her shop Fiber for the People, and again, this is like super vibrant green and it doesn't really show in this camera, but I'm going to do the, uh, do the same thing for that one. I'm going to pick up or shape the heel and then pick up the stitches and then go from there. So I have the first sock on that one done and, um, yeah, so that is everything for whips. I haven't touched my, you know, that's, I don't even, simple line shawl. <laughs> I haven't even, I haven't even touched it for so long. I don't remember what it's called. Um, and the starting point, that's, that's languishing. Oh, the sweater. Yeah. I didn't get any work done on the sweater. I am not going to have it done in time for when we go to Edinburgh. Um, so yeah. Kind of bums me out. I really want to. I'm gonna try, but really, it's kind of a pipe dream because I've never knit a sweater before, and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, for any of you who saw last episode, last episode or the one before, I've got this much done. That's it. But I think what I might do, I'm gonna concentrate on the socks and the sweater. Um, over the next two weeks. So that's it for whips. So for what's in the queue, here's the thing. I've got to get crack a lacking on my Christmas knitting because, and I don't know if my sister watches this podcast, but I wouldn't put it past her, so I'm not going to say what it is. So that's going to be a bit... Of a secret project. Um, so I'm not going to be able to show it to you, but I have to get cracking on it because I think I'm going to use a Stephen West pattern. I was going to use the Free Your Fade pattern, and she's not going to know what this is, so that's fine. I'm actually going to use, I think, the Stephen West. Um, dotted raise pattern instead. I think. Because I really want to try that one. And it'll work perfect for what I want to do. So, also in the queue is, of course, you know, my sweater, which isn't really in the queue. But, considering how little I have done, it feels like it's in the queue. Uh, the other thing is, Wait. Pee break. My sister's kids wanted me to write them a story each for Christmas. So originally I thought, hey, that's a good idea. And then I realized I'm already under deadline for my next book. And I'm not going to have time to finish that in time for the deadline and work on stories. So I'm going to do the major story. Um, I 
but it's not going to be for Christmas. So uh, the other thing uh, they wanted was they saw me um, knitting on socks. Or they saw I had my socks with me when we were at the camp last weekend with them. And um, they really wanted some of their own because uh, I had knit some for their mom, which was the Spring Explosion Part 1. <laughs> that uh, they wanted their own, it, except for her youngest, Gabe, who wanted a hat. And his feet are probably constantly growing, so doing socks for him now probably wouldn't fit him by the time Christmas rolls around. So I let them pick out the yarn, and I had actually dyed a colorway for my niece, Maggie, and called it Maggie's Garden. So she wanted her socks made out of that. So this is what hers are going to be made out of. Ooh, there's something stuck in here. I wonder what that is. Oh yeah. Uh, so this is like, this is an 80-20 base and it's got purples and greens and pinks and plums. And uh, so that's what she wants hers made out of, which is great. And my nephew, Malcolm, uh, is boy after my own heart. He likes the color orange. So he wanted his um, in orange. So I swiped a skein of burning down the house from the shop and his are going to be made out of that. So that's going to be for him. Now my youngest nephew Gabe who wants hat wants it in camouflage so I don't actually have anything in camo so I'm going to have to knit up or I'm going to have to uh, dye up some camouflage yarn I guess so that's going to be what's in the queue that um, making some progress on my sweater which is that's more of a whip um, and also uh, so the socks the hat, two pairs of socks, the hat, and the Christmas gift for my sister would be double those. So that's about it for what's in the queue. So yeah, that's it. Wow. You know what? Here's the thing about acquisitions. I don't have any other hobbies that really cost me much in the way of, you know, spending a lot of money on it. Knitting is sort of my jam. Um, and I read too, but I've got so many books already stockpiled that I don't actually have to spend any money right now <laughs> on books. So I've decided I'm not going to feel guilty about spending money on yarn or knitting bags, project bags, or paraphernalia, because I don't think I should have to. It would be different, I think, if I was spending the money and breaking the bank and not paying my bills and that kind of thing, but I'm not. So right now, uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to go crazy. With it, I'm gonna. I've kind of looked at my stash and thought, you know, you got to start getting some of the stuff knitted up. But if I see some yarn and I really love it, I'm gonna buy it, and I'm not gonna feel guilty about it. And I'm not saying everybody should do that. I'm not advocating, hey, go crazy, and but I'm just not gonna feel guilty about it. But I am going to show you what I bought. <laughs> so I uh, I have some sock blockers, but I have really small feet, and the sock blockers I have I found kind of stretched the sizing for my sock out a little bit when I was doing that, like almost too much. It felt like it was like overstretching it, and I like my socks to fit tight, so I didn't want to, you know, stretch it out. So I went on to Loopy U and they have a small size, which is like about 
size five or six. And you know what? I never actually held that up to my foot. That's perfect. Da -da -da. So, and I also really wanted a pair of wooden, my rogue hair happening again here, uh, a pair of wooden ones. I have the kind of blue plastic ones or into there somewhere. Um, which are fine, they do the job, but again, they're stretching mine out a little too much. So this is actually the size of my foot. Um, so yeah, so anyway, I, uh, I picked up two of these. And this will be good for the kids because the kids have smaller feet. Well, at least for now. Actually, Malcolm's feet are bigger than mine already. I don't know how that happened. So... I got those and I got those from the Loopy U. So I'll try to remember to put the little their website down there. Um, and then I also got and one of these is sort of I know what I'm gonna do. Um, I got two skeins of lichen and lace. So this one here, this is on their, her single space too. Let me see if I can hold these up. Uh, so this is on her pewter colorway, and this one here is Silver Fox. So I want to do a cowl. I haven't done a cowl in a while, and I love knitting cowls. Um, so I think I'm going to do kind of like a fade cowl. I just want to find a pattern... Um, that I like. One that's not too challenging, kind of a take on the go, but that has still has a little bit of detail to it. So if anybody knows of any that, you know, let me know because uh, I'm always looking. So I did, I bought these and I love gray. Gray is probably one of my favorite colors. I think at least half of my wardrobe is gray. So, and then I don't have a project in mind for this one. I sort of do, because I was kind of thinking for a cowl on this one too, but this is from Evie Knits, and this is her merino silk uh, fingering weight, and again, the color isn't as vibrant on the camera as it is for real but oh my god if you I wish I wish I could like literally hand this off to you so you could see or just it so you could feel how like it's so silky soft um so it's 50% superwash merino and 50% silk and it is gorgeous like I picked it up and I've gone into I bought this at my local yarn store uh the loop and <laughs> I've probably gone in there about three or four times and picked it up and thought, no, you know, because the silk makes it a little more expensive, but it's just, it's so soft. And then finally, I'm just like, you know what? You've been fondling this thing enough now that you need to take it home with you, um, which just sounded way dirtier than I meant it to. <laughs> so... That's it for my acquisitions. Yeah. So yeah. So if you do know a nice cowl pattern, I kind of like the ones that are they sort of draped and then you can kind of loop them up around a couple times. Um. So that's it. That was it for acquisitions. I I kept it under control. I didn't buy any new patterns this time around. I got a good stash there right now. That's it. So it's a short acquisition section. Um, so yeah, so next I'm going to do the to die for, which is uh, some new stuff that's going to be coming up in the shop. So if you aren't interested in that and you want to skip to the end, which is just usually my total random section, then uh, that's great. Um, thank you for showing up and uh, I hope you'll come back next two weeks time episode 14 and uh, don't forget about 
the uh, giveaway for the 100 plus subscribers. And I think that's it. So yeah, we'll get on to, to die for. And uh, if you're not sticking around for that, hopefully I'll see you the next time. And thanks so much for coming by. So for to die for shop update is coming. I think I'm going to do it on September 16th. So if you follow me on Instagram, I'll, I'll have the notifications up there. And I think I'm podcasting the 16th, but it'll be the 17th before this goes up. So I don't have everything because I did, um, I did one, two, I'm looking, I've got them drawing on the rack over there. One, two, three, four, five. I think I got six colorways, new colorways over there. Um, one is this, which is the old timey Christmas. And I've got, but I do have some here, so I'll show you what what we've got skinned up so far. This is mosaic. It's a much brighter green than what it's showing up here, but it's got uh, some nice reds. And this is on. This is the my MCN base, but it's also on the seventy five twenty five base. And Selena, I've got everything on pretty much three bases. Um, so there'll always be a 7525 and then the other three bases will be either the Twisted Sister, which is my BFL base, the Glitter Party, which is the Stellina base, or the Gush, which is this one, which is the MCN, the Superwash Merino Cashmere and Nylon. So um, and that'll all be indicated in the shop, but I'm not going to like go through and say I have this and this and this on this base blah, 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 because we'll be here for a while. <laughs> so, so this is mosaic. That's a new one. Then I did do up some more, uh, springtime explosion, uh, cause I had some requests for that. So there's going to be some more of this. I think I've got one on 7525. The rest are all on Glitter Party because uh, it just looks really pretty when it's all glittery. Says the girl who's not in the glitter. <laughs> so I've got some of those. This is a new one. It's September Morn. So that's some oranges and plums and greens and all that good stuff. Uh, so that's September morn. Uh, this one is berries and bramble. So it's some reds and browns and some natural. Then this one is called penance and it's got some greens and purples natural in it. I like this. This is I'm gonna keep one of these for myself. <laughs> uh, this is I don't actually have a name for this one yet. <laughs> so this is gonna be one of my Christmas bases. This one is on the glitter party base and then um, I think I'm gonna have one over here. This is on my classic base. This one, this one has been re-skained because I wanted to see what it looked like. And this skein kind of came out of the pot a little, a little tangled. And I don't like to, uh, if I think they're tangled, I'm going to re-skein them just so when it arrives in your home, you're not cursing and swearing <laughs> and sending me hate mail. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like unskeined. And again, colors are looking more faded than what they actually are. So this is similar to the old time of Christmas, but it's not on the yak yarn. The yak yarn gives it a much more rustic, um, old timey look. So I don't have a name for that yet. I don't know. Uh, so that's one of the Christmas bases. Uh, this is one of the Halloween bases. This one is called Toil and Trouble. And that's like grays and 
purple. I actually love this one turned out so nice. I might have to keep skein of that for myself too. <laughs> Um, and that one was getting a lot of attention on Instagram, so I've dyed up three skeins. I may have to do some more. So that's one of my Halloween bases. I have two more that are coming. Um, yeah, I've got, for the ones that I have over here, I'm going to put all of this up on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, uh, you'll kind of get a better view of of them. I'm waiting for, I ordered some photography, uh, a white box, white box, light box. Anyway, uh, just to take better pictures. It hasn't arrived yet. I was really hoping it would, uh, before the next shop update so I can do the pictures up a little better than what I have. Um, but yeah, it hasn't shown up yet. So I may just have to do it, make my own for the time being. And then anyway, I don't forget what I was going with that. <laughs> so, but all of the pictures, all the pictures will show, will be up on Instagram. Some of them already are just a quick snapshots after I rescan them, but I'll do better ones that come up for the, uh, for the shop update. So this here is uh, Mrs. Claus. So that's going to be one of the Christmas ones. This is, this is going to be Gush. Yeah, this is my Gush base. Oh my God. I love MCN. It is like my favorite. It is so soft and gushy. So that's Mrs. Claus. And that's it. I've got, hang on. This is one of the Halloween colorways. This is on the glitter party base. So these are still drying a bit, so I don't have them skeined up, but. So that's going to be, <laughs> that's really messy looking. <laughs> Don't judge the yarn by the messy skeiner. Uh, this is going to be Witch's Brew. So that'll be, that'll be one of the ones coming up. And then there's another one, another Halloween base called Kill All the Pretty Things. So that's it for kind of what's coming up in the shop. There's a sale that's going on right now. I marked some of the other stuff down for an end of summer sale, but I think that finishes up today. One finishes up today and then the other one finishes up on the fourth, but I think I may extend that. I may extend it. Um, so check out the shop. It's Lockfire Knits on Etsy. I'll just put the little click down there. Um, yeah, so that's going to be September 16th. And I should have all those in there. And there may be a few more. There's going to be the new ones that are kind of over there. And I would show you, but this room is such a disaster right now. I'm not going to do that. So watch Instagram and they'll show up on there. So I think that's it. I, I feel like this is actually a somewhat short episode. I'm not running over the hour. So, uh, yeah, so that's it for the shop update news. So total randomness, there's really not that much to say. We had our vacation in PEI, which is great. And, um, yeah, the first time that we've gone there that I actually haven't been like Jones and to get home by day three, I had my knitting. I had no writing deadline hanging over my head because I didn't, I have a writing deadline, but I had already booked that week off completely from writing. So I kind of factored that in. Um, so yeah, I did no writing, didn't write a word, uh, did a lot of knitting, um, caught up on some podcasts, although the Wi-Fi was a little wonky, so I didn't get as much podcast watching as I wanted to, did a little podcasting. Uh, the weather was okay. We only had... Like we had a lot of sunny days, but there weren't any super stinking hot days, which I'm fine with. I don't like stinking hot. So it was comfortable. Um, so yeah, so it was a good vacation. And then we, last weekend, we went down to my parents' camp, which is very camp. See, here's the difference between a camp and a cottage. A camp 
has an outhouse. A cottage has indoor plumbing. <laughs> so they have indoor running water, but the outhouse is up in the hill. Um, you know, where the bears are. <laughs> so, um, there's no bears. Well, there are bears, but they weren't there. <laughs> they weren't there when we were. Um, so there was me and my husband, my sister, her husband, and her three kids, and then my mom and dad. And it was, we do this usually once a year, and that's for, uh, to celebrate my sister and dad's birthday, which are, she's the end of July, he's early August. So we usually go down there and spend the night. Um, although we didn't sleep because my husband and my sister and her husband were sharing a one of those fold-out campers, so we were like on sleeping on this side, and they were sleeping on this side. So my brother-in-law snores very loudly all night long. <laughs> so we, my husband and I didn't sleep. I don't know how my sister slept. Like honestly, it was right in her ear. I don't know how she slept for the last, what, 12 years they've been together? So, anyway, we came home and I crashed hard. It was so, oh, I don't know if we'll stay overnight the next time. So, we took the dog this time too. We didn't the last time, actually. We had had him in the kennel um, because it was supposed to be really hot <clears throat> and when it gets really hot there it's just more comfortable for him at the kennel because they have air conditioning and he gets to play with the other dogs and he loves it so I don't feel guilty about putting him in the kennel if we go away like overnight or something like that but I miss him and I really wanted it was supposed to be cooler and it was cooler um, this last weekend. So we got to take him, we got some pictures, and I posted a few of them on Instagram. So anyway, it was a good time. I enjoyed myself uh, despite the not sleeping <laughs> at all. Oh my god. Here's the funny thing. I snore. But, and everybody was like, make sure you fall asleep before Killy starts snoring. I don't think there was even a 60 second lapse between when he shut his eyes and when the snoring started. So I was razzing him hard about that. Because everybody was like, oh, fall asleep before Kelly starts snoring or you'll never get to sleep. Well, yeah. <laughs> no. Plus, I had a breathe right strip on. So that usually stops me from snoring. Usually. Anyway, <laughs> so that was that. Then my father-in-law came down the day we got back from the camp. My father-in-law came down and he was here for, I think, four days. So, and then we've got my stepson this weekend. So I actually took Friday off just so that I could have a day completely to myself. So I spent the morning writing uh, down at the coffee shop, which was awesome. Got some work done. Then I came back, got home around noon hour, and spent the next three or four hours dying. Yarn, not like dying, clearly. <laughs> so I got a lot done yesterday, and it was so awesome just to kind of have a day to myself because I am very much the kind of person that I need my alone time. I am not fit for public consumption if I do not get the proper amount of alone time. And after I've been with the groups of people, then I often need to buffer that with time alone, <laughs> Kelly time. So thankfully my husband's very understanding about that and he just like, and I'm like, I'm going. <laughs> or you're going because <laughs> I need some time um, so he knew what he was getting into we were friends first so <laughs> and I think that's it 
I think that's everything. Um, the next big thing coming up is our trip to Edinburgh, and I am so excited! Uh, which I really wish I could have had my sweater done, but, you know. Um, I've already sussed out some of the yarn shops. What we're going to do is we're going to fly into Glasgow first because we can get a direct flight and then we're just going to take the train or um, book a car to drive us from Glasgow to Edinburgh. And then we're there for a week and it's going to be awesome and I don't care if it rains because I'm in Scotland. <laughs> so uh, that's about it. I don't think there's anything crazy coming up. Um, Coming up. September for me is like the first of the year. Um, I still, apparently my brain still operates on the school year, which I don't know why, but September to me, there's something about you're coming off the kind of the heat of the summer, depending on where you're living. Um, the summer wasn't really that hot. Um, but there's something about like the crisp autumn air that to me feels like new beginnings. So anytime I'm thinking I want to start a big project or I need to kind of get my eating habits and my workout habits back on track because they fall off the rails in the summertime. I just want to eat nothing but wine and ice cream. That's it. So you know, you hear people saying, I got to get rid of the winter weight. For me, I need to get rid of the summer weight because I get sugar belly by the end of the summer. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to the fall to kind of get things back on track. I took most of the summer off from writing. So now I've got a deadline. I've really got to get going on that. So I'm really looking forward to autumn. I'm so happy it's September. Um, I'm an autumn girl. So I think that's about it. I think that's everything. So I'm going to let you guys go. And again, thank you so much for uh, stopping by. Thank you to my returning viewers and subscribers and all you new newbies that have uh, checked this out for the first time. I hope you'll come back. And I usually podcast every two weeks. Uh, hit the thumbs up down below there. If one of these sides. Um, if you, uh, if you like the podcast, uh, that helps me get the word out and, um, come back next, uh, episode and see what's going on and, uh, check out, remember check out Instagram, uh, for updates and news on the shop update if you're interested. And until then, I will see you guys for episode 14. See you later. Happy knitting.